Hey, 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 it's Record Store Day, everybody. So this is Matt, and I thought I would check in. It's been a while since I did a video. thought I would uh, check in and do what I uh, cover what I picked up today on Record Store Day. So I was up at work doing some stuff, so that's why things look different behind me here. Uh, yeah, I thought, considered not partaking of Record Store Day this year, kind of, uh, it's been a, it's been a bad year, and I just really was not into it so much this year, but I did end up going, uh, this would mark, if I had not gone, this would have marked the first time I hadn't gone, uh, since the first one, I didn't go to the very first one, because I, uh, I, I think I remember vaguely hearing something about it, but I didn't really know what it was. I went to the second one, and I've gone to every one since. When I went to the second one, I didn't actually know it was only the second one. That was back, I want to say 2007, 2008, I believe, if I have my dates right. And, uh, you know, I, I, I thought at that time that it had been around since at least early 2000s or maybe late 90s. But I found out later that that was only the second one. Anyway, back then, they didn't have as many uh, the the Record Store Day only releases. I think, I don't know what they had, but I'm, I'm going to say they had like 15 or 20 or so. And, of course, that's grown over the years to where now we're, this is the ninth Record Store Day or the eighth Record Store Day. I don't know. But, I mean, now you got a couple of hundred new releases, so it's grown exponentially. Um but anyway, so I had gone, and that, uh, from the second one on, that had become a big deal to me. I found out about the list. I found out about the Record Store Day website. I found out all that stuff, and I would go very, very early in the morning before the store opened. As crazy as that sounds, I would get there several hours early at, uh, you know, five or six in the morning, which sounds insane, granted, but, you know, I enjoyed it. Uh, be a, there'd already be people there, and I would be, every year I've managed to be like number two to number ten or so in line, and you see people that you, you know, uh, that I've seen every year, so people are talking and hanging out and having fun, some people bring donuts and coffee, and and it's, uh, it's a good time, people are going through their list, talking about what they want to hope to pick up. Anyway, I didn't go early this year. I went, uh, I think the store opens at 10, and I went up there at about, about 11, 11.30, and there was still a line of people going through looking at the Record Store Day release stuff. Not, uh, it, was, it was a little long, but it wasn't huge, ridiculously long, uh, because that's the thing why I would show up early when there were things I really wanted, because by the time they opened, there would be a line around the back of the store and all that. So, you know, by the time you got up there, there bunch of the stuff be gone. Anyway, so I wasn't totally into it this year, and I saw when the list came out, which in previous years had been a big kind of cause for celebration for me. Uh, I was just like, okay, the list's out. I guess I'll take a look at it, and I did. And to be honest, there's been, um, you know, lists of varying qualities over the years, but the list this year, they're really just I'm not going to say it's a bad list because I'm sure there's stuff on there that a lot of people liked and I hope that everybody that wanted to take part in Record Store Day got, got what they wanted, what they were looking for. But for me personally, there just wasn't a whole lot on the list that that knocked my socks off. And uh, there were some things that I saw that I thought, you know, yeah, I wouldn't mind having that, but it's not life or death. And uh, money's been kind of tight lately too, so I didn't want to go out and blow a lot of money. Uh, like I have in, in previous years. So, um, really, there were only, there were a couple of things I wouldn't have minded having, but there were really only two things on here that I really, really wanted. One of them was a, a James Brown live album, double album, and another one was a various artists compilation for, it is a soundtrack to a movie called uh, One Voice, which I've never heard of that movie. I don't know what it is. But has songs by Amy Mann, Nora Jones, I think Susanna Hoffs, Nico Case. And the reason that I wanted it was that there's a Lydia Loveless song on there, and I'm a huge fan of hers. If you've watched my videos, you've heard me go on and on about her, that I don't like much new music, but she's one of the few exceptions to that. And uh, I've got 
all of her previous record store day releases, which were 45s that were not put out on any of her albums. So it was kind of cool when they're limited edition with picture sleeves. This was an album that she had a song on. I don't know what song it is, if it's something from one of her previous albums or if it's something that's not on any album. But I really wanted to track that down and they didn't have any, unfortunately. So maybe I'll get it later. And the James Brown, they didn't have that either. Uh, there were some things I was going through. So I got to the store. Like I said, there was a bit of a line and I waited in line. And uh, when I got up to the, the, my record store does it, I like the way they do it, is that you go through the line, you can only get one copy of each item, and they have laid out on tables, they have boxes, and they have the albums, and then they have the 10 inches, and then they have the 45s, and it's uh, they've got the dividers with the names of the, you know, all that stuff. So, and it's in alphabetical order, and it's single file, and you go through, and that way it's not, uh, I've been to some stores where they just have it out on the table and they open the doors and everyone converges and it's fists and hands and feet in a feeding frenzy of flight. And, uh, you know, this is the better way to do it. So anyway, I got up there where the records were and I started looking through them. And like I said, there were some things that I thought, you know, yeah, okay, maybe, but I ended up not getting anything record store day related. Uh, there was, a uh, one thing I thought was kind of strange was uh, it was a 45 and it was a picture sleeve of Santa Claus and his reindeer. Kind of a cool picture. It was like an illustration drawing on a sleeve. And I can't remember the guy's name now, but it was uh, said a Christmas story by Joe Blow or whatever the guy's name was. And, you know, I'm big on Christmas records and Christmas music, but I never heard of the guy. It was a 45 and they wanted like $9.98 for it. And I almost got it just because the sleeve is cool, but I figured, you know, I don't have a clue who this guy is, and I don't want to spend $10 on a 45. So, and it also thought it was kind of strange because usually on the Black Friday Record Store Day in November is when they put the Christmas releases out. So it's kind of odd that they're doing that in April, but uh, who knows? I don't know. Well, they also have at this particular store all through the year, they have a section of old record store day stuff which is stuff from previous record store days that did a sell and so they had some of those boxes when you went when you got to the table you had those boxes first of the old RSD stuff and then you got into the today's record store day stuff so maybe that was something from a previous uh, year or two ago but so I went through and uh, I saw the Grateful Dead I'm not a huge fan of theirs but I sometimes I listen to them their live stuff and all and I've gotten in past record store days, some of their uh, releases. They had the, it's like a box set, kind of like the All Things Must Pass box, what it looked like, as, as far as, and um, I think it was like a three or four LP set. It was a live concert, 1976, 1972, but it was like $75, and I thought, no, nah, I'm not gonna do that. I saw something by the Buzzcocks, they're a great band, but just looked like a greatest hits compilation a double album and it was like 30 bucks and I thought nah you know I've already got this stuff otherwise saw the kink CPs really cool picture sleeves uh, considered it for a second but they wanted $13 for them I'm not gonna pay $13 for a 45 EP and all those are are represses of EPs that were uh, put out back in the 60s so if I'm gonna get something like that I would just as fine track just as soon track down the original which granted would probably cost more than cost more than 14 bucks if you found an original of that but still you would have an original and it's not like the songs on there there's nothing on there that's not I don't already have on albums or CDs so I, I'm not gonna pay 14 bucks for an, a repress of something that was already out unless it's some you know rare album or something that's hard to get uh, but certainly not for a 45. So, um, and there are a couple other things I saw. It's a rough guide to East Coast blues. Look kind of cool. Uh, there was a, blah, 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 a Japanese garage rock compilation from like 64 to 69. That looked kind of cool. But 
you know, they were 20, 25 bucks, and I thought, nah, I'm just going to pass on it because I really don't need to be, I did end up spending some money, but I really don't need to be spending any money. Uh, a lot of the times, like I say, this store, they keep Record Store Day stock that doesn't sell today, and they'll have it in a section of the store throughout the rest of the year. Sometimes they even mark that stuff down later just to try to get rid of it. So some of those things, if they're around later, I'll pick them up. If they're not, uh, I guess I won't. But the other good thing is that uh, Docs, where I've been going, I've gone there every Record Store Day, that and Record Town, except I think the first two times I went, I went to uh, Forever Young Records out in Grand Prairie. But that's about 30 miles away from where I live, so Docs is in Fort Worth where I am. And uh, on Record Store Day, they also have free, free beer, free hot dogs and hamburgers and candy bars and bands come in and play, and it's a whole day's worth of things. But the other good thing they do is they have 20% off all of their records, not the Record Store Day stuff and not the brand new releases, but 20% off all of the used records and everything else. So that's a pretty good deal. So I went through, like I said, and looked at the current batch of Record Store Day goodies. Didn't really find anything that I wanted and didn't end up getting anything. I did get a Record Store Day release, though, and I'll explain how that worked in a second. But So I went back to the rest of the store, the, the used records and whatnot, and I picked up uh, four items. One of them was quite a find, I think. But anyway, so 20% off. Start off with uh, Prince. This is a Dirty Mind album. And... Uh, this actually is one that I never had before, um, so it's good to finally get it. Uh, this one, there is a video that I've been wanting to do that's a theme video that I have not done yet because I don't have all the records that I need to do it, so there's several that I need to get to fill in the gaps, and once I get them all, I'll do the video, and I will uh, let you... Uh, I'm not going to tell you what the theme is yet. I'll just wait till I do the video. But, you know, you could get your family together and uh, phone the neighbors and have them come over, and that would be a fun little game. You all can get together and try to figure out what the theme of Matt's uh, upcoming video is going to be. And then uh, when you see the video, if, if anyone was right, you can give them a hearty handshake, a pat on the back, and maybe a nice little prize. And That sounds like a lot of fun. So Prince Dirty Mind, I got that. Uh, another one, I'm doing the Beach Boys reviews, which like I said, it's been a while since I've done a video or a Beach Boy review. I need to get back on that. Um, problem is, the I did Pet Sounds and the next album up in order, I don't have it yet. It's proved kind of hard to track down for a reasonable price. So once I get that, and I also have not heard that album other than a couple of songs, so I'll need to listen to it and I'll do that and I'll do the video. But this is a got Holland by the Beach Boys, which is a later album, Pet Sounds 66, and the next album up is 67, but uh, Holland, I think, came out in 1973, so I won't be getting to that for a while as far as a review, but I'm glad to have got a copy of it, uh, 1973, like I said, and this is, among Beach Boys fans, considered to be one of their, one of their better albums, one of their really good albums. Uh, I'm not familiar with it. I have heard... Uh, well, the track listing is somewhere there. Sail on Sailor, I've heard. And I don't think I've uh, heard anything else off this album that I know of. But it's supposed to be a good one. And this is um, the, um, they're on reprise records by this time. And uh, this also came if it'll come out of there. This also comes with a bonus EP that Brian Wilson had put together was going to be part of the album and for whatever reason it ended up not being and put out as an EP and it's called Mount Vernon and Fairway which is a fairy tale and there are four songs on one side and two on the other so six all together little EP and I've seen used copies of this album before, and sometimes they don't have the 45 with them, so I want to make sure to get that. So Holland by the Beach Boys. The third album I got, and this was quite a fine when we were going, I was waiting in line for the get up to the record store day table, 
kind of snake through the store because the line's a little bit long and you go through the uh, aisle where the rock and roll is and stuff and up on the wall they have albums uh, up on the shelves or whatever that are the more uh, the more the rare stuff and so I, I saw a copy of this album which I had wanted to get for quite a while and it's pretty pricey it's hard to find it's limited edition on vinyl way back when it came out which I think was 1997 according to this so um, and it was pretty pricey I saw them in the 75 85 dollar range a few years ago and which you know then lately I've seen them for even more they're going in the 125 to 150 dollar range well I found it it was fifty dollars which is still pretty pricey but it's a double album and at twenty percent off it was even less so and this is a greatest hits linen there's the track listing if you want to you know it's all the stuff you know imagine it's the karma uh, just like starting over mind games number nine dream I think that might be my favorite linen solo song there's a little ding in it but um, yeah so it's good to finally get that. Um, I know that that uh, Joe, me and Mr. Mayo, did a, a video on all the different Lennon Greatest Hits albums because there's quite a few nowadays, and he started off with Shave Fish, which was the first one to come out, and then all the others that came out in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And uh, his contention that with Shave Fish is really not necessary anymore because there's been better ones since. And this one's kind of a career overview where Shave Fish was just his stuff up through 1974. So I, I got a soft spot for Shave Fish because it was the first one that came out. First one I got, and I got it. Came out in 75, I think. I, I probably got it around 76 or so. So it just reminds me of my being a kid and that's the one that that was the go-to Lennon greatest hits album for for a long time but I'm glad to have Lennon legend on vinyl finally I think you can still get this on CD I believe but the vinyl is and it says there's limited edition vinyl release and um, let's see in the side is just uh, there's no poster or anything but inner sleeve is just uh, that and then there's some information on the songs and um, yeah, so it's good to uh, to uh, get that one finally. Trying to fill in my vinyl on those harder to find McCartney, Lennon, and uh, Ringo albums. So I said uh, I didn't pick up anything from the record store day stuff today, but I did get one record store day album. And it's a record store day from, uh, I don't know when this came out, a year or two ago, a couple of RSD days ago. And it's uh, Brian Wilson's first solo album, which this came out in uh, 88, I think. Somewhere late 80s, 88, I believe. Uh, but yeah, his first solo album. And they had some of these that were just regular on vinyl from back in 88 that were a little bit cheaper than this one. But I went with the record store day. They had two two old copies of it that they didn't sell, because it's a double album instead of a single album. So there's a there's an album with some uh, bonus tracks, and I'm not sure what all. Uh, I know the song Love and Mercy. I'm not familiar with the rest of this album, but I, I've heard it's supposed to be pretty good. Uh, so I figured go ahead and get the limited edition one with the bonus material. And uh, so you get a, a little booklet in there. I think that opens up. And uh, oh, okay, they're they're sleeves. Okay, that's what they are. And then the records themselves are in these plastic sleeves. But uh, I don't know if this is going to show up. But it's on a uh, kind of aqua blue white and grayish vinyl so that's cool so yeah uh the two things i wanted weren't able to find the rest of the stuff didn't really jazz me too much that was my record store day adventure hope that you all had good luck in getting what you wanted 
I know Bobby Z wanted that Grateful Dead set, and he said he couldn't find it. None of the record store days out there in Death Valley carried it. But maybe he'll run across it eventually. I hope so. So have a good one. Good to see you all, and I'll be back uh, sometime soon with some more videos.